Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Indeed, as we continue to celebrate Easter, uh, every Sunday is a celebration of Easter, but especially during this season, these next several weeks until Pentecost. Uh, uh, again, uh, welcome to our Facebook congregation. Uh, as, as we've mentioned before, I will say again, if any of you out on the Facebook congregation are not receiving the bulletin, uh, we send those out by email, usually on Saturday night. So if you would like to receive that, please contact the church office. Uh, the best way is to do it by email. And as you, as you make that contact, then we will send you the bulletin so that you can worship along with us. Uh, the bulletin has all the words to the hymns, all the responsive readings. Uh, everything is printed out. Uh, so if you would like to have that as a, a, a aid for your worship at home, uh, please uh, contact the church office. A uh, number of announcements that I want to go through uh, today with some things that are coming up. Some of these I will uh, repeat over the next several weeks just to uh, remind you. Uh, first of all, if anybody wants a lily, take them today, uh, please. Um, for, for, for my sinuses also, that would be help, helpful. Also, uh, this Wednesday, at, we're, we're getting, going back to G&G &G for our lessons. Jack is flying solo. If anybody goes on camera with him, he might even buy you a donut. Uh, <laughs> uh, but please, uh, 10 o'clock Wednesday morning, uh, the lessons uh, at G&G's. And uh, again, um, it's going to be in great hands. Uh, His hands. We're, we're, we're gonna, we had a bet how long he will be able to go, uh, whether he can go the whole hour or not. Um, as, we, as we move along, we want to remind you of some things that are upcoming next month. I want to just sort of wet your whistle, so to speak, just to be mindful, but we will, we will be reminding you, uh, this is a little ways out, uh, a little bit further out, but I want you to be aware, on May, Saturday, May 1st at 2 o'clock, we are having a memorial service for Mary Lou Nash. Uh, they had one down in Florida, they wanted to have one up here, for the people uh, in, in, in North Georgia, but also for some family members that this would be a little closer. So Saturday, May 1st at two o'clock uh, will be that service. Also want you to know that on Monday, May 10th at 10 o'clock, uh, we are going to start up our Bible study class that we used to have on Wednesdays that will now be moved to Mondays. Mondays at 10 o'clock, and we will meet in the fellowship hall. I want to also mention that this Wednesday at 5 o'clock, the women's Bible study group will meet in person in the fellowship hall, and they are going to begin doing a study on the Gospel of Mark. Uh, so please, for the women in our congregation, this Wednesday at 5 o'clock in the fellowship hall, they are starting a study on the Gospel of Mark. Next Sunday, with, within our Synod, uh, will be the commemoration of the Here I Stand speech that Martin Luther made at the Diet of Worms. Now, if you look at it, it looks like the Diet of Worms, uh, but it's the Diet of Worms. Uh, th that was the great speech that he made 500 years ago that he, he said, Here I stand on the Word of God. I can do no other. And so next Sunday will be the commemoration of that. Uh, if you read my uh, PM pause the other day, uh, I, I'm beginning to enlist a prayer walking team. Those of you that want to either prayer walk your neighborhoods or prayer walk in the community, just going to re your restaurants that you frequent and praying over the restaurants. And uh, even somebody suggested to me, uh, pick a strip mall and go into every business and, and pray for them. Uh, that we want to begin a, a very hands-on kind of way of praying for our community. If you are interested, contact the church office, and we'll give you some, uh, some information, some suggested information on how to do it, uh, and also the cards in which we want you to uh, give as a reminder. I think I covered everything. Sally is traveling home from uh, Winter Haven. She was there for the memorial service of our good friend uh, yesterday. And so uh, continue to keep Sally in your prayers as she travels home. 
And she's gonna hit a lot of traffic in the Atlanta area because it's spring break. Everybody's coming back from spring break, so uh, please keep her in your prayers. So now as God has brought us here together, uh, as he has gathered us uh, to receive his gifts, especially the gift of his word and his people this day, we take some time for the spirit to prepare us, our hearts and minds for that worship. We do so with prayer. Uh, you can either let the spirit guide your prayer. You might use uh, a hymn verse. You might use one of the scripture passages, but we do so as the candles are being lit and the prelude is being played. As we continue to draw nearer to our God through word and through sacrament, we also are reminded how God drew first drew near to us through the waters of our holy baptism as we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! The congregation, please stand.
we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie, we do not the truth. but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, from us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Almighty and everlasting God, for our many sins we justly deserve eternal condemnation. In your mercy you sent your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who won for us the forgiveness of sins and everlasting salvation. Grant us a true confession that dead to sin we may be raised up by your life-giving absolution. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we be ever watchful and live true and godly lives in your service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pause now to be reminded where we have erred and strayed, where we have fallen short of God's glory, but also what God does as he restores us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 4. The full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The epistle is from 1 John chapters 1 and 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our own hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testified to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us, that which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in light, as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. The congregation may be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our text for meditation this day is the epistle text in 1 John chapters 1 and 2. But there's some interweaving of, of all these texts, uh, a little bit with the, the first reading where you get this early, the sense of the early Christian church. Uh, you get a little flavor of that even with uh, Jesus in the room with the disciples. Um, and I want to ask you a question. Do you think there was a honeymoon period in that early Christian church? You know, when a pastor comes into a congregation for a first time, uh, there, there's usually a honeymoon period. Uh, it, it might last uh, a year or two. Uh, sometimes it's shorter than that. Uh, but usually there's a time where it's a, it's a feeling out period and, and things, people are just bubbling over. Sort of like what we experienced last Sunday with, with Easter worship. You get such an excitement, such a joy, and that just continues to carry on. But if you look at the early Christian church, there was a flurry of fresh revelation. You know, here you have the apostles constantly preaching. We've got that written in the Word. And so they were filled, and they it was new on their ears, this flurry of fresh revelation. And what rapid growth there was. I mean, can you imagine that on with, with one sermon they added 500 to the church or 3,000 to the church or... Man, I wish I had that impact. <laughs> so, so, so you had this fresh revelation. You had this rapid growth. But as we hear in that Acts chapter 4, they were grace-empowered. The power of their testimony just flooded them with the grace of God, that they were willing to gather all that they had and be very communal in, in the dispersal of it. Wow. Sounds to me like a honeymoon period. But also sounds to me the possibility that it might have been an opportunity that people were open to being misled. And that's where we hit this text in 1 John. Was in the early church, there were openings for people to be misled. Because there was disagreement on who this Jesus was. <clears throat> and those disagreements uh, among the teachers, but also as the people heard it among the people, those disagreements led to dissensions among church bodies, but also among individual churches. There was conflict among the community. And there were fractures that developed in their fellowship. And it centered on Jesus, as, in, in many cases, it centered, centered in on Jesus as humanity. Where they denied that Jesus was flesh, that he was really a person because in that culture, in that day of thought, anything that had flesh, anything that had body was sinful. And obviously the Son of God, the, the Christ, could not be sinful. So thereby he could not be human. 
And that's why we get this letter, or series of letters, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, in order to try to uh, approach and broach that, that subject that Jesus truly was the Son of God, but he also was a human being. But brothers and sisters in Christ, we don't see too much different in our world today. Because for many in our world, and especially those who sit in the pews, there are some who believe that Jesus' humanity no longer matters much. Yeah, it mattered while he was here on earth because he had to go to the cross, but once he was resurrected and once he ascended, it really doesn't matter. Because there are, there are in the minds of some, and, and it's really prevalent in our culture today, is, you know, Pastor, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. And, and whether, they, whether they have vacated the church or whether they still are within the church, they have this mentality that they merely need to follow a model of a spiritual Jesus. So you don't need the physical Jesus anymore. Because as long as I've got the model to follow of a spiritual Jesus, I'm okay. And, and so there is an interest. There's an interest in following emotional curiosity. And, 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 and I want to fill myself because I've got this, got this curiosity within myself that I want my heart stirred. And so those that mentality often gets caught up in a regimen of spiritual cleansing to finally reach a point that I can be spiritually satisfied. Take a look at your bulletin cover. <laughs> it did not take Luann very, I, I gave her the images, it didn't take her very long to find these images because this is the mentality of spirituality in our world today. We get caught up in doing something that gives us spiritual cleansing. Oh, oh. But it's not only that, it's also the other pictures you see there. If I just do enough good things for the right people, or if I just commune in nature, that somehow I can go through a spiritual cleansing and, and be spiritually satisfied that I'm in the right place that I can somehow catapult my soul into a heavenly place and achieve an inner peace. You can listen to podcasts about this. You can watch TV shows, some of them that are on the religious networks about this. Just go, well, there aren't many brick and mortar bookstores anymore, but go to Amazon.com and, and Google self-help. See how many books you find. Because it's a matter of taking your soul and catapulting it into the heavenly place to achieve an inner peace. But really all it is, it's an escape. It's an escape from and being oblivious to the injustice that's all around us. It's an escape from and being oblivious to the jagged edges of this life. And aren't there times where you want to do the same thing? So you turn off your TV, you shut your doors, and you just want to find that place. That place where you can shut your ears, close your eyes, clench your hands, to ignore any involvement. And 
so we get to, I think it was verse 8 in 1 John 1. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We deceive ourselves and deny the reality of sin. But even worse, we deceive ourselves and deny the re reality of my own sin. We live in a flesh and blood world. We live among flesh and blood people. And as we know from Genesis chapter 3, if you live in a flesh and blood world and you live among flesh and blood people, you live in the midst of sin and you cannot deny it. And that's why last week we celebrated, this week we celebrate, and every Sunday we celebrate that a flesh and blood world needs a flesh and blood Savior. And as we gather here week in and week out, you and I are taken to the truth. No, we're taken into the truth. That was from the very beginning, as John says here. We are taken into the truth that was from the very beginning. And we are embraced by the incarnate Christ just as Thomas was. And it wasn't it, it was in the physical presence, but it did not have to be a physical embrace because you know one thing in that uh, gospel text? I want to ask you the question, did Thomas ever touch Jesus? No. We don't know. Nonetheless, because of the flesh and blood Savior that was in the midst that day, Thomas was embraced, just like you and I are embraced by the flesh and blood Savior through the Word, through the sacrament of holy baptism, and through the sacrament of the altar. That we are embraced by the flesh and blood Savior. And we are embraced by that incarnate Jesus so that we might be able to embrace him just as Thomas and the disciples did. Because he indeed is a living, suffering, dying, and rising Savior, the resurrected one. And it's what our ears have heard, what our eyes have seen, and what our hands have touched. And, it, and it's what we physically uh, examine. It's what we physically encounter. It's what we physically experience as we gather together as his people to receive his gifts of word and sacrament. And now we get to lay claim because of the power of the Holy Spirit. We get to lay claim as Thomas did, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. And it's a reminder for us that what happens in the body, what happens in the body, what happens in the body really matters. The confession of our sins, as we did earlier this morning, the confession of our sins clears the pollution. It clears a little bit of that fogginess that's some, somewhat in here, but a lot of times up here. That confession of sins clears the fogginess that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. And then it's the, the blood of Christ himself who cleanses us from our sinful condition and from our sinful being. And then we are enabled to have lives that line up with what we believe, just as Thomas knew and understood as he made that profession of faith that day. So every Sunday as we gather, brothers and sisters, we need to celebrate the empty tomb. But even more importantly, we need to celebrate the resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the best way we can do that is we become a community 
We become a community that is the incarnational ev evidence of that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That he still lives, he is risen, he still lives indeed. And just like we heard in the gospel, Jesus breathes on us his Holy Spirit. And then he sends us. So as we have seen and heard, again, what our ears have heard, what our eyes have seen, and what our hands have touched, We are sent. We are sent to go and tell, just like those leaving that Easter morning from the empty tomb. And all God's people say, Amen. We join together in our profession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which may be found printed on page 5 of the bulletin. I invite the congregation to please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Merciful Father, at your bidding we come to you in prayer, trusting in your mercy to supply us with all that is needful and beneficial to us, and for all for whom our prayers have been requested. Silence the doubts that plague us, and deliver us from fear that believing in you, we may know the full comfort of your gracious presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant our salvation. Deliver us from pride and humble us by your Spirit, so that, confessing all our sins, we know the peace of a clear conscience and serve you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant our salvation. Make your church bold in the confession of your name before the world and give your blessings to all pastors and church workers. We especially remember this day Pastor Zach Hoffman at our sister congregation in Gainesville as he prayerfully considers a call to Holy Cross in St. Cloud, Minnesota. We also give thanksgiving for Matt Cream, the grandson of Carl and Rita, who has finished his dissertation for his, and will receive his doctorate in May. And we pray for all saints as, as we are the circuit congregation of the week. We pray especially for our prayer walk ministry and an increase in small group that groups that gather for study, fellowship, and service, both in person and virtually, so that all may accomplish your bidding in their service to us in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Guard us from all enemies and bless our nation with good government and good leaders, that we enjoy justice before the law, equality of opportunity in the marketplace, and peace in our communities and between the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant our supplication. Restore those absent too long from the church's sacramental life, especially those who have been separated during the pandemic, and bring to repentance those who have fallen into error and sin that they may again be one with us at the table of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant our supplication. Give comfort, healing, patience, and strength to the sick, to those suffering a troubled mind, and to those carrying the heavy burden of grief, that they may know your presence in their hour of need. We especially lift up this day, Jerry, with upcoming procedures, Fred, dealing with lung cancer, Connie, recovering from surgery. Audrey, as she is in hospice care. Georgine, as she is undergoing her uh, physical uh, difficulties. Kathy, as she prepares for upcoming surgeries. Laura, as she battles cancer. And all others that we name in our minds and in our hearts.
Lord, in your mercy, accept the praise and thanksgiving of our lips, the continued faithful giving of the tithes and the offerings that we bring, and our labors for your glory, that we not suffer from ingratitude or the pride that believes all we have is the fruit of our own work. Lord, in your mercy, remembering blessed Thomas and all the disciples, the saints and the martyrs, and those who taught us the faith, and now rest from their labors, bring us with them through the day of trouble into the dawn of peace, and the place of everlasting life and light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant our supplication. Grant to us that we may confidently trust that you will both hear and answer the prayers of your people, and supply us with all good things according to your merciful favor. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. Let us go and serve the Lord. 